do 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 Scooby doo do 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 up do up do up do up do up. Hello there. I didn't know it takes so long to recover from hypothermia, but it does take a while. Um, I want to make a couple videos tonight, and it always seems to fascinate people on uh, metaphysics and as a poly translator now of uh, plenty, 20 plus years I wanted to talk about uh, the fundamental mechanics in these two videos on original i.e. earliest Buddhism pre-sectarian as uh, found within uh, the doctrine of the five Nikayas and this is by the way you're probably not aware of this long before the Theravadans existed. Those are those yellow-robed guys running around uh, Southeast Asia, Sri Lanka, uh, Laos, Burma, Thailand. And uh, talk about the original article and also, too, about uh, the fundamental foundation of same. And uh, I never discuss religions, by the way. I'm not interested in religion. I'm actually talking about metaphysics, logic, and uh, common sense, and uh, specifically what it does say when actually debating a topic of uh, discussions such as uh, earliest Buddhism, and by the way, the only time it was actually given a name by its founder was in Samyutta Nikaya 5.4. He was asked what his teachings were to be called, and they were nothing new. He said uh, that they were Brahmayana, or path to the absolute, or the agathon. The term Buddhism came many countless centuries long after his passing. The term itself doesn't mean anything. Am I a Buddhist? No, I'm not, because uh, what passes or is conventionally called a Buddhist is completely unoriginal to the original article, or as Dr. A.K. Kumaraswamy famously said, and this is a brilliant quote, by the way, is that everything... Uh, um, well, well, what is the passage he said? I'm trying to remember that quote. Sometimes you think about ten things at once and you forget. He said, yeah, here we go. Buddhism is most famous today for everything it originally never taught. And a very, very accurate quote. Sorry about my... This is what happens when you think about multiple things at once. You actually lose your train of thought sometimes. Um, specifically, and also is the case in cosmic mechanics, there has never been anything other than two foundations ever postulated by anybody. One of them is based on atomism, which is intenable, illogical, and breaks the uh, paradigm of Occam's razor. And the other one is the ether. So we've ever only ever had those two foundations, uh, atomism and the ether. And it uh, is impossible to talk about metaphysics. There's no such thing as a metaphysics that denies the soul. Um, metaphysics is, of course, the flip side of the silver of the coinage in referring to physics and metaphysics. One is the cosmos noitos, i.e. ontology, and the other one is the cosmos atitos, as the Greeks referred to it, or the existential cosmos of the universe. So there's no such thing as metaphysics uh, without a soul. Um, Buddhism today is, in quoting Kumaraswamy, and he's correct and highly accurate, is that it never originally taught a denial of the soul. It's completely ludicrous to talk about transcendence um, without a soul. It's completely ludicrous to uh, talk about liberation or vimukta without a subject which attains it. Now, the psychophysical corporeal husk, uh, i.e., as an ancient Pali, rupa, vedana, sanna, sankara, and vinyana, forms, feelings, perceptions, impulses, and consciousness. Of course, there's a psychophysical corpus. In every branch of metaphysics, there's always, always, both Greek and Indian, two selves. The existential self that you see in the mirror when you're brushing your teeth, the psychophysical self, and of course, the ontological or true self, the transcendent self. Kind of like, uh, you know, the, the, this mirror, this radio in the mirror would be the existential where the psychophysical composed of resistors, capacitors, and a battery and whatnot. But the actual self would be, don't take the analogy too far, the actual signal that's tuned. There's no soul in the body anymore. There's a signal inside the radio. That's not a denial, however, of the signal. And this is where all of modern Buddhism starting, and by modern I mean starting roughly about the 4th century CE, were the uh, Sarwasti Wadins, who later became the Theravadins, those, those yellow-robed guys in Southeast Asia, originated and uh, theirs was one of moralism and, uh, and and this is true if you actually take a metaphysics and you extract out you know the point or nexus or the axis mundi of liberation you are left and this is by default undeniable you're left with morality and uh, this is uh, found in all forms of uh, ancient religion in referring to this 
this outwardly pious and uh, awe-inspiring stuff, which is ultimately superficial and useless. Um, in the case of uh, the Pharisees, I don't know if you know much about it. They were outwardly pure, but inwardly uh, impure. You can't have a metaphysics that denies the soul. It's completely impossible and self-contradictory. It's completely impossible. You know, you could have... Uh, you know, a belief system of keeping yourself morally chaste, but what are you doing it for? That's like keeping your car clean, but not driving it to its destination. Um, one thing is conducive to something else, which is conduct or morality. But uh, in absolutist metaphysics, which original Buddhism was absolutist metaphysics, um, we're talking about what is beyond good and evil. Um, morality has no bearing on transcendence, liberation, it has no bearing on that whatsoever. However, it is conducive to leading one down that path. Just as, you know, if you're uh, drunk and doing stupid stuff, then you're not doing what is conducive to um, insight, wisdom, and your own uh, self-attainment. Atta vasrati, the soul is charioteer. Um, one of the most famous passages always incorrectly translated by the Tarawadins is Sulvi Mutta Chattasam Nabandam. The thoroughly liberated citta or nus, or spirit, if you will, the spirit to sanctum, is nibbana. Nibbana, it, it depends on whether you uh, say the root of uh, nirvana is nirviti or nisbandhu. It makes no difference. It means the same thing. Nisbandhu literally means from bondage. Nirviti literally means no more turning or no more becoming. Literally like no more winding this, the watch spring. So there is debate on the, the origins of uh, the, the etymology of that word. This bandhu or nivriti, it makes no difference. It literally means unbecome, unbound. And unbound requires a subject. We cannot uh, talk about like spiritual oblivionism, like nibbana is blowing a candle out, or, you know, uh, transcendence is a, uh, you know, a puff of flatulence in the wind of the cosmos. You just, whew, it's over with. That sort of spiritual uh, nihilism is not found anywhere. As a 20-plus year translator, Pali, found anywhere. Um, actually, transcendence is referred to as peramam sukham, or the ultimate bliss. Kind of a crude translation, but it's pretty accurate. Peramam sukham. And the notion of uh, liberation without a liberant or transcendent, uh, transcendence without a transcendent principle, i.e. the soul, is completely ludicrous. It's asinine, it's non-doctrinal, it makes no sense, it cannot be part of metaphysics. It is completely impossible to be a part of metaphysics. Um, Aryatangika Maga is the path leading to Amatagami Maga. Amatagami Maga means path to immortality. Samira Nikaya 5.8. Uh, Uddana, the, one of the oldest texts of the Nikaya is Uddana, Uddana Iributaka Surunapara, some of the oldest texts, as long as, along with the Sagata Bhagapali of the Samyutta Nikaya, Book 1, Uddana 81. There is an unborn, an unoriginated, an unmade, and an unformed, i.e. the soul. If there were not, O followers, this un, uh, unborn, unoriginated, unmade, and unformed, there would be no way out for the born, the originated, the made, and the formed. Obviously and logically so. Um, and I've spoken about this before, you cannot get accurate information on the internet because uh, every Buddhist website, and, and this is why I have no connection to Buddhism, like, well, how do you have no connection to Buddhism? You've been trans this is what people don't understand. It's like, how do you not call yourself a Buddhist no connection to Buddhism? You've been translating these texts for decades. It's like, yes, but, you know, getting back to the Kumaraswami quote, nothing today that's called Buddhism is actually Buddhism. It's completely unoriginal to their earliest article, and this is a pre-sectarian corpus, the Nikayas are. They're mentioned on uh, the, the, one of the pillar edicts of King Ashok, mentioned Panch Nikaya, referring to the five Nikayas, Degamajima, Samyura, and Gutaran Kudakon Nikaya. Completely pre-sectarian, long before all that stuff came along. Kind of like, you know, pre-sectarian Christianity, long before Catholicism and Protestant, you know, all before all that other, you know, mumbo-jumbo came along. Completely unoriginal you know, as an analogy. So, um, I'm not interested in what is called that term today because it has nothing to do with the original. Absolutely nothing at all. But if you go on the internet, and I dare you to do this search, I mean, I dare anybody, 
because there's nobody knows more about this term than I do. Literally, nobody on earth knows more about it than I do. If you type anata or anatman, Sanskrit, Pali, same term, on a Google or Bing search, or any search for that matter, you say, well, anata, anatman means no soul, and Buddhism taught there was no soul. That's why Buddhism is different than Hinduism. Completely ludicrous, asinine, non-doctrinal, illogical, senseless, crude, base, profane. It's untenable. It's not found within the actual teachings themselves. It's senseless. It's completely senseless. This notion actually came about uh, from uh, uh, Germans and Europeans, a lot of uh, English people that traveled. You know, when, Buddha, when uh, religions, you know, the uh, insight into different religions around the world when people started traveling a lot in the 1800s, which is basically when it was really flourishing. English and uh, Germans, they traveled to Ceylon in India and... You know, they were given these texts, and they were told what they meant and how to translate it by the yellow-robed guys there. Uh, Buddhism is different. We teach there's no soul. You know, it's all about being chaste and pure. And, you know, absolute attainment is just like blowing a candle out into oblivion. Oh, okay. And uh, that's not original. That's not what the texts say. That's not my opinion or a feeling, but it's an actual fact. And that's how all that proliferated for nearly a hundred years before people uh, woke up and because Pali is an ancient dead language ancient dead language and people that were smart and you know saw past you know that uh, dogmatic propaganda which was not original to the original text at all it's not what the original texts say at all Atavasrati. the only thing that's actually called permanent or Nietzsche in uh, doctrine is uh, the soul um, Buddhism was not like some sort of new faith or religion or something that sprang out in the Magadha Valley, northern India. It's completely not true. It was not like something different. Now for something totally different. It was not. It was a neo sramanic movement. It was Neo-Vedanta is all that it was. Um, even in Gautama's time, um, the teachings of uh, Vedanta and of Upanishadic uh, thought um, had been completely... Uh, warped and twisted even 2,500 years ago. They were already old at that time and they'd already been completely twisted. All he did is just reestablish what was there underneath all the mert, dirt and muck and mud. And uh, Yeah, but you cannot get accurate information on, on the, this topic. Uh, it, I actually find it sad and depressing and horrific and how uh, corrupt the world is. And, all, and this is why I never touch religion. I don't touch that stuff at all. You just don't touch it. It's kind of like alcohol. I don't drink at all. I don't drink alcohol either. Um, you just don't touch that stuff because it is so infused with you know, filth and dogma and garbage. I don't touch it. I'm interested. It's like, what's the original say? You know, lacking a time machine. And thankfully, this is a pre-sectarian corpus. The Nikayas are pre-sectarian. That's really important, you know. What do they actually say? You know, you know, of course, then you have to learn an ancient dead language like I do, and I'm really good at ancient dead languages. And it's like they don't say that stuff that you see on the Internet at all. They don't say any of that. It is a form of monistic metaphysics. It is Advarvedanta by a different name because nothing is known except through the modality of the knower, which means you're basically saying the same thing in a different way. Nothing is known except through the modality of the knower. That's a really fascinating uh, quote everybody should know. Because the way a fish describes water, if a fish could talk, it would be completely different than a human being would describe water. Nothing is known except through the modality of the knower. But that's what the original article says, and there are thousands of passages, and nobody wants me to read thousands of passages, pro-Atman, pro-soul quotes from the Nikayas, Atta-sarama, Nanda-sarama, the soul is a refuge with none other is a refuge, on and on and on, thousands and thousands of such passages. That is a metaphysics. You cannot have a metaphysics without the soul. It's completely impossible and untenable. It can't be done. So, anyway, I think this video was kind of short and sweet. Um, I hope you liked it. And I, was, I think it was a lot more concise than I normally am. People say, hey, you talk too much. Stop flapping your lips. Stop it. It took you 20 minutes to say something you could have said in five minutes. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> How's 2021 going for everybody? Yay! I'm going to go eat an orange.
an orange and an apple. Scale says I've lost six pounds. I don't feel it. You know, when you're really fat, I guess. I don't know how about really fat. I'm pretty fat. I'm not like, you know, busting out of the chair fat, but, you know, you lose six pounds is nothing. You just don't feel it, I guess. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cold outside, man. It takes a long time to recover from hypothermia. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you like this video. If you do, always click the link below. And uh, thanks. Goodbye. Do 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 do